All right, hey everyone, welcome to a messy workshop again. I did actually get it tidied up after the last time, but then I've done a load more work. So I just run a load of uh, two by fours or four by twos as we call them in the UK, uh, ready for putting up some roof rafters. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, why are you using roof rafters? The purlins, the roofing goes straight to that. Uh, well, I've decided I'm gonna actually insulate the top floor uh, just to make it a more usable space in the future if we want to. We don't have any plans on using it for anything like that initially, but um, I thought seeing as you know it's such a pain to do afterwards, if I just do it now, we have a multi-use space, like an insulated room that could be an office or whatever, so I'm going to do that. And so yeah, that's uh, why we're putting rafters up. So you'll see, I'm going to cut them to put the angles in them, and then we'll take them all up and get them fitted. So as you can see, yesterday I got the uh, first one up. That's the overhang one. And then I've got one more that's the first one internally. So we can get some boarding up on the inside and they are gonna become the uh, insulation gap or uh, the gap to fill with insulation rather. Okay, so let's get some of these rafters in. Just uh, got this one in. This last one. So I've made up these uh, blocks, which are my spacings. So this should be giving me, I just double check it, this should be giving me 600 centers, which it is. So move that block over to there. And this one out of here. Move this down to here. Grab a rafter. This should be a fairly quick job compared to all the other stuff I've been doing. Make sure it's the right way up. Is that the right way? No, other way. It. Butt it up against them, butt it up against there. Sorry, it's a bit windy again today. It's always windy this time of year, really. stainless steel screws to fix them up because I feel like uh, they're a better solution for this because the larch which is what this timber is has a tendency to uh, rot fixings unless they're stainless steel I might stick some nails in it as well just just for a bit of extra sheer strength but uh, I don't think it's necessary
sorry, my battery on my drone's getting low. So you're only going to see one more of these go up. <laughs> and it makes an annoying alarm. As you can probably hear. And in a second, it will start trying to land itself. It's really very annoying. Excuse the noise. There we go. Right, I'm gonna have to land ya. Right, so I managed to get a few rafters in. It's hard to get a good angle to film from, unfortunately, without climbing all the way to the top of the roof. I don't really fancy doing that today because it's so windy. So I've got to this point here where we're at a double rafter because here is going to be a dormer window and then we're going to start going with rafters again the other way. There's a little bit of a better view for you. Yeah, it's quite enjoyable work because it happens quick. It's more conventional building really and it's the first thing in this building that actually won't take forever to do. So yeah, I'm going to go and get a few more rafters up here and uh, we'll space out where that dorm is going and then uh, keep going along and we've got to do the uh, the pitch bit yeah well it shouldn't take too long actually so yeah there's the space there for the dormer window and now i'm going to double up this next rafter here and then we just carry on as we were 600 centers Oh yeah, I forgot to mention in the uh, last video that the uh, wind turbine, a few people noticed that it was uh, laid down. It's uh, the bearing that it swivels on the pole on has failed. Not the one that actually uh, drives the uh, blades or the blades drive. It's the one that um, swivels on the pole has failed. It's a Land Rover wheel bearing. It's quite a surprise that it's failed, but uh, nonetheless it has failed, so it's just another thing to do really. Hey everyone, so I'm up at the uh, milling machine and uh, run out of timbers long enough to carry on with that roof section you saw me do last time. So I'm just going to mill that big bad boy there into about 10 to 12 4x2s probably. You have to excuse the sound, both my external microphone ports are broken on both of my cameras so I've got stuff on order but we're on uh, standard camera and microphones for now. So uh, hopefully it's working alright, but yeah. Get a log milled and then we we'll carry on with that roof. Typical, it started raining. The last thing I need. Thought it was going to be a nice day for once.
got to empty sawdust bucket so it's all spilling out. But uh, yeah, this log's so big, I'm not going to be able to do much with it. Um, so I'm going to have to cut some chunks off of it first in this current position, then remill them later because I can't turn that on the mill. It's just too heavy. But uh, we're somewhere anyway. So let's really hope that isn't on the other side of there. Oh, good, it's going. We're still into it a little bit, but uh, there's plenty either side of it, so we can work with it. That's all right. All right, got it whittled down to a, a nice big uh, cant. That is cant, not the other word. I think that's what they call it. Yeah, it's a big sort of 12 by 12 and I've got about three, one, two, three, four, five, five pieces there. So I think I get about 15 pieces out of this, which is quite good. So now I'm going to go 50, 50, and then I'll be left with 100 and then we'll go 50, 50, 50, 50 like that. That's the most efficient way of doing it. Got 11 there, so that's actually everything I need. And I've still got another at least four there, so he did quite well in the end. Quite efficient. So, yeah, I'm gonna go and take them down because it's uh, getting a bit heavy and not heavy, but loading the back of the van because they have to stick out so much. Hey everyone, so a uh, windy day, but a nice day. Pleased to have a bit of sunshine. Uh, I got the last of those rafters up, the ones we milled uh, yesterday, the day before yesterday. So they're all done in there and I've started figuring out how I'm going to do these dormer windows now I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing um, I could do it all out on CAD but I feel like it's probably just better for me to do it like this because it's more intuitive to me just build it in place so I'm laying it out and uh, once I've got an idea of all the angles and everything it should speed up a bit but I haven't filmed anything because uh, yeah I just don't know what I'm doing really I should be back and forward turning the camera on and off you know but uh, yeah, really cold, windy day, but I'm enjoying it. It's nice, nice to be out in the sun. Um, the one thing I've got a bit of an issue with is it's getting top heavy up here. And if I wobble, I can feel the building just doing a slight, slight wobble where it's top heavy and it hasn't got any uh, infill between the walls. So once I've got this done, before I add too much more wind resistance and mass up here, I need to start getting some of the external walls put in to add a bit of bracing. bracing. It's just because it's so tall and it's so top heavy at the minute. So I'm going to have to prioritise that. But uh, we'll get these windows done and then uh, we'll get on to doing some filling in some walls. Because if I put this roof on as well, it's another few tonne and we get a big storm because it's still into the winter, you know, I could be in trouble there. So yeah, we'll have to prioritise get, uh, getting a bit more bracing into the building. But that's all part of it. All of these infill walls are all part of the uh, structure. They're part of the, they're like shear walls. 
and so it will be strong it's just the fact that it's an open frame with pretty much all the weight at the top and so it's got this slight wobble to it I don't get me wrong it's not like rocking or anything but you can just feel it in a gust you can just feel it just a tiny bit of wobble and uh, making it a bit uncomfortable so we're going to prioritise that next a bit of a view of this side of the roof so yeah two dormer windows just to give us a bit more usable space up here it's going to add a lot of work but I think it's worthwhile this is a building for life all right, hey everyone, I'm back to work. As you can see, it has been raining again every day. It's like I get a day on uh, and then like three days of just constant rain and wind. But uh, I have to apologise, I didn't film this because I got a bit carried away trying to figure out how to do it because I didn't know what I was doing. It's easy enough construction, it's not complicated woodwork really, but um, it's difficult to figure out how I'm going to tie it all into the roof and that. So I think I've got it figured. The only thing I don't know about is that, that's sort of overhanging into the... Uh, insulation gap so that might end up having to get cut off I'm not sure on that but I can cut it off from underneath it if it gets in the way I don't want to do it just yet and I've got that centre prop in there just propping it up until I've got all my window dimensions that's going to fit in there and build that out but it's to a point that I'm happy with I'll show you from the top so yeah really it's just uh it's just a classic dormer window to be honest I think you can see that right I managed to get it all level and in the same plane um, just tying the roof in is a bit more complicated than, uh, than it might look because I've got various different levels of stuff going on here but um, I'll figure it out, the structure is there so we'll work with that so I'm just going to finish this off, cut some of these ends off, sort it out and then I'm going to do the other one and I'll get a bit more filming done on that one It adds a lot of complication to the build really um, and the roofing but uh, like in, in between these, there's going to be some dividing walls. And so like in these two areas that I'm putting these dormer windows, normally I'd be starting to hit my head by about this point. So just about there. But now this whole area is opened up and you can get all the way into here and there'll be a window with some light. So I think it is worth doing, but it's uh, just a bit of time and complication. But it's a building for life, so it's worth, worth the effort, worth the time. All right, let's get on with the other one. Right, first job is to get these rafters in that fill in between the ridge. So 550. I've planed all these timbers down so I can do centres from the edges of them. Five fifty, five fifty. I'm screwing and nailing everything just because uh, I just want this building to be really strong. So it uh, gets two of these and then diagonal nails. Nails would be fine on their own, but because this is large, this timber, it has a tendency to try and rot fixings. So you can't put too many fixings in really. All right, I'm going to get all them in and then we get this ridge up. But you are currently on my pole that's going to support the ridge. Right, so got me ridge and everything up. It's all level. Just cut me wall plate pieces. So I'm just getting them in level and straight. That needs to come this way a bit more. Get in there. Right, so now I've got uh, two wall plates up and my ridge. Now I need a measurement between the wall plates. And with that and the roof pitch, which is 15 degrees, which is the minimum for my roofing. I want to try and keep it low profile, but it says it's okay at 15 degrees. So with that wall plate measurement and the pitch, we can work out the rafter length. 
Yeah, I learned a lot of like this style type roofing from uh, Robin Clevett. Um, he's got a YouTube channel and he's an absolute master. He really is a master of carpentry. You know, getting all the angles and the geometry. He's got some great videos. I re definitely recommend it. Um, Cause like, I'm not trained in any of this. And uh, yeah, it's really nice to learn from people that have you know done the stuff for years and years and years. Yeah, I'm not comparing myself to him at all. I'm sort of learning from him. Cause I'm, you know, this is all new to me really. But yeah, so we get the measurement of the wall plate and then we'll cut out all the rafters on the floor and then bring them up here and they should all fit if we do it right. So now I've got my uh, wall plate measurement. So I can do over overall span is two, one, two, zero. Ridge width is 50. Roof pitch is 15. Now that is my rafter length. So I just marks 15 degree end cut there. So we cut that off. So that measurement we got, 1067, is from here down to here. So 106567. That's that. Now we've got to draw a line from there at 15 degrees down there. So that is the uh, angle of the bird's mouth. Now my bird's mouth, I'm doing at 25 degrees, uh, 25 millimeters, sorry. And then we square off that line and that will be my bird's mouth down there. It's not the perfect square for doing that, but it'll be all right. Then we'll check it and then we'll use it as a pattern. I don't know if anyone noticed that, but I uh, <laughs> read the measurement wrong. I'm too busy trying to film. That was 1160. Thought it didn't look quite right, so we'll do that again. So that is one, what was it? One, zero, six, seven, one, zero, six, seven. It's there. There you go, that was close. All right, so if I got that right, this should hook over the wall plate and hit the ridge and if I got it all right and square and everything it should also work in all locations ah right <laughs> right then where have we gone wrong let's check the ridge check it the other side bit of a scrap going on behind me Hopefully this sort of sells out. Yeah, well, I made a mistake. I accidentally pressed an eight instead of a zero. <laughs> it's too busy trying to film my screen. But yeah, our measurement is one, zero, seven, one. So that's our problem. So we we'll have to cut a new rafter, never mind. Right, should have this right now. It's too busy filming. I couldn't see my phone. There we go. That's it. Perfect. So that'll be our pattern now. So we've just got to make a load of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight of them, but I've run out of timber, so I need to go and machine some in the workshop. But we've got a pattern, so that's good. All my rafters cut, and so I'm gonna get them up, get them nailed in pretty quick, hopefully. Got access, need a tape, and a nail gun. Oh, we need a battery in that.
that's the uh, rafters up. Now I need to do lay boards and then these uh, other funny shaped rafters, whatever they're called. You can tell I'm not a roofer. Right, managed to get the uh, lay boards in. Battery run out of my camera. In fact, it's still running out, but I've just about got enough charge to get a couple of these in. I've made up. Right, sorry everyone, my battery keeps running out and it's getting late now in the day. But uh, that's done. Yeah, all good, got me lay boards in. Last couple of little rafters on the end there. And yeah, so that's the two of them done. Pleased with that. So yeah, good bit of progress. Uh, hey everyone, so uh, Saturday morning, sun's out at last. Honestly, it has been, hello puss. Hey big tiger, and say hello to all your fans. It has honestly been, I think, one of the worst winters. So I, I think I'm pretty sure it is the worst winter since I've been here. And autumn. In fact, it doesn't feel like it stopped raining since about July. You know, it hasn't. And I'm not even sure it's the, uh, you know, the most rainfall we've ever had. But it's just been like rain, rain, rain. Then like three days of drizzle, one dry day, and then just rain, rain, just constantly. It's been really hard to get on and get anything done, really. But uh, making progress so slowly. I'll take you up there and show you what the plan is. Also been doing a lot of stuff that's uh, not been filmed. All the uh, lambs, or the ewes, are all in the uh, lowest field we got here now, ready for uh, lambing. And so they're only about six weeks off now. And so they're already there. So that's their lambing field. So we should have some more lambs soon. The other ones are up the top with the uh, ram and uh, ram's mate. Got a little weather lamb that we use to keep the ram company. Yeah, they, they're all sorted and vaccinated, had their feet done and they're all ready for lambing. So been busy doing that as well. This is the issue with the wind turbine. So the bearing in here is completely collapsed. You see the seals come out. It's on a, a taper roller bearing in there. Obviously the force is just too much for it. It was a second hand bearing when I put it in there, but um, I don't know, I'll put a new one in and see how it goes. If it fails again, I might have to uh, change the design, but yeah, something I need to get around to doing. Other than that, it's all fine. Blades are all fine. It didn't break anything. Just uh, just needs that bearing changing. We don't need it at the moment because uh, as I was saying, it's been so wet that uh, the hydro has just been running overtime. You know, we haven't needed anything other than the hydro because it's just chucked it down every day. So yeah, I'm really pleased to have got these two dormers done because it does really give a lot more usable space. And yeah, it is going to add roof complications to getting it all watertight, but it's worthwhile. I know it is. So yeah, they're both done and all these rafters are up. So yeah, on top of these rafters, we're going to be put in um, wood insulation board like a natural wood fiber insulation board on top and then battening and then the uh, fiber cement uh, roofing sheets so it's going to be a real substantial roof and uh, because of that that's why I need to get a bit more stability down low because um, like I say in a big gust you can just feel when you're right up the top you can't feel it stood here but when you're right at the top you can just feel a slight wobble and it's just the flex in the posts. It's all braced and everything. It's just the flex in the posts, just, just wobbling because it's so tall. And so I'm going to concentrate on getting a bit of uh, stud walling and stuff done down below and a bit of stonework and stuff down there next before I do all of the same thing up on this part of the roof. Geese are doing well, all happy. Their fields are getting a bit bare, um, but hopefully spring's on its way now. Their uh, offspring that they had, which we reared last year, they're all gone now. They're uh, in the freezer, which is a little bit sad, but you know, it's what we're doing. That's, uh, that's what we're doing, trying to live sustainably, trying to produce our own food, and uh, it's just part of it. You know, because of the uh, weather's just been so crap, I haven't really been able to get on as much as I'd like to. Um, I've been doing hydro stuff as well, quite a lot of that actually. But yeah, a few people have asked how the trees are getting on. And there they are, some of them at least. You see they're a good five, six meters tall now. 
I think they're about six, seven years old now. They're doing well. Some of them are really thick at the base. Like if you have a look at some around here, some of these alders. Just out here, look. They're up, getting up to the, certainly taller than, uh, taller than this top floor. Yeah, they're good to like six inches at the base. You know, they're like that, at least at the base. Maybe a bit more. Yeah, doing good. Some of them are smaller than others. Some of them are slower, like the alders are growing up really well, but um, like the oaks and stuff still tiny. But yeah, that's our, uh, our nice little habitat area there, and it's all growing up lovely. And uh, there's going to be a window in the end of this here, so it'll be a nice view out of there when you're up here. So yeah, since um, Dot's moved in, we've been living together a few years now, at least four years maybe even. But, um, you know, she's got a lot of hobbies and stuff, and she works from home a little bit as well. And the, the house is just becoming cluttered. There's just not enough room in there for both of us. So I'm going to kit this out. And so at least this is an area that she can um, work from and put her spinning stuff in and everything for now. Um, and just makes it a more usable sealed space. You know, so that's the, uh, that's the reason for doing this. So I think it's going to be worthwhile. It's adding considerable cost and time, but I think it'd be worth it in the end. Okay, so that is going to conclude this video. Um, I thought I'd get some drone shots up for you because it's quite hard for me to get the camera into some good locations while I'm doing it and operating the drone while I'm working as well is a bit too much for my little brain. So uh, give you some end shots there. So I've got a bit of work to do really to try and um, figure out how I'm going to get that roof to all seal properly and be watertight because it's such shallow pitch. I'm going to have to make some um, custom valleys to go around it and um, I'm gonna have to get quite clever with that because of the low pitch but I'll make it work one way or another but um, you can see I got it all lined up really nice or everything all lines up so all the measurements are right and it all sits all lovely and straight so I'm pleased about that um, so yeah the next video I'm gonna have to really get onto this stone work I've got to go and get some lime but um, I've got all the stone I picked that up quite a while ago you see it stacked up there in the corners um, and yeah gonna get on to doing the stonework i'm quite keen to get on and do some stonework but i'm doing a lot of woodwork recently and um, i tend to just get a little bit bored if i'm doing something for a long period of time lots of woodwork or lots of milling i start to feel like oh fancy doing a bit of stonework and then you know that same thing will repeat i'll get bored of the stonework and then i want to do some woodwork again but uh, that's going to conclude this video and in the next one we'll uh, get on and do all that stone and uh, stud work Alright, hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.